Okay, so we have a shark here. This is actually a little bit more complicated than I thought it would be. It needs it needs uh, quite a bit of cleanup, first of all. Uh, I think it's too big. The land impact is going to be uh, pretty big. So let's go into edit mode and see how many vertices we got here or triangles. Uh, that's, that's large. So we're going to reduce that. Uh, you can retopologize this some other way, but we're just going to use decimate to get rid of a lot of the detail so we can just bring it in for testing purposes. But also we need to clean this up. Let's see, relations. All right, we have um, we have the armature parented to uh, most likely an empty, uh, but we need to remove that so that uh, we can get proper uh, transforms going on. So I'll do Alt-P, and I want to keep the, the transforms so the the object doesn't move. Now I can remove that node. It's not useful anymore. Another thing we need to do, or we should do, is remove the object animation, which can interfere with our export. So I'll go to um, Character Tools, uh, clean the motion, and just remove the object animation. And that's all we do there. Another thing is, I want—I think I want to scale this down. Uh, so let's let's bring in first uh, a regular safe rig, and I want to bring this in front so we can see what we're doing. And that's a second life rig. You can tell that the shark is pretty huge. Now you might be able to get away with this size if you map the bones manually, but I'm going to show you a really neat trick that way you do it automatically, and then you can do it manually if you want. And I'm just going to reduce the size of this so that the bones don't get all weird when we bring it into second life. Um, then I'm just going to delete this rig. We don't need that anymore. Uh, it will still animate properly. Uh, don't apply any of the transforms. I will use our tool called uh, Template Mapper, Visual Snap Mapper. And I want to bring the proxy rig up in front of the nose here. So let's do a negative a little bit and do an action. See where it goes. All right. I want to bring it a little further. So reset stage, make the negative a little more. Action. Uh, that looks all right. What I want to do is select all these bones and use a uh, an automatic mapping technique to get this quickly done for prototyping. So what I'm going to do is hide the mesh first, and I'm just going to select all these bones. Marquee select all the bones, every single bone here. Make sure you don't catch any of the bones on the black rig. And then I will say select safe, and it will select all the safe bones on the black rig and just deposit. If all of these turn red, we're good. If there's any leftovers, we're going to have to do manual mapping or skip some of them, but we're good. So I will reset the retargeter. Uh, your map will stay on there, and you can save it this way, and you'll be you'll be golden. Um, show the mesh. The next thing I want to do is just export the animation. This is a custom rig, so it's a lot easier to do this character tool. So we'll go to bone control. Uh, I want to send this, send the um, timeline to the animation exporter so I don't have to adjust the frames. And I'll just snap the bones. When I'm done exporting this, I can just delete this rig. That's a proxy rig in order to export this using the mapped mesh on there. Now, nothing has happened to this. We've cleaned it up a bit, but none of the bone names have changed. The bone naming changes during export. That happens with animation and with mesh. And for the animation exporter, uh, you'll see is frame 0 to 47. I think frame 0 is inaccessible by Blender over here, so I'm just going to tick that down one just to be safe. I'm going to pump up my priority to 4, and I definitely want to loop all my tests, and I'm ready to export here. This will turn red, and when it's done, the red will go away. That's exported. I can just hit delete. Get rid of that. Now I'll select the rig again, or I can select the item if I want to, but let's go over to Character Converter. I want to enable Make Copy so I don't damage the original, and I'm going to convert, and it will make a copy of the entire set and then convert it. You'll see here that it made a copy of it, and I'll just export that. When it's done, I can delete the copy, and everything's selected, so that's that. Let's go into Second Life and see what we get. All right, I'm going to create my typical anchor, and I will upload the animation, drop it into the anchor, and I will drop my script. This comes with Bento Buddy to the anchor. I'm going to upload the mesh. Oops, you know what? I forgot to uh, decimate the mesh. So let's go do that right now.
because I, I noticed that this is pretty hefty. So let's go to um, modifiers, click the decimate here, and I'll do 0.2, and that should be enough. And I'll have to do my convert again, and that's already selected. So convert, and then export. And cool. Let's go back. Now we're ready. I'm going to put all these to zero because I know that this uh, parcel is full. Make sure you include joint positions. Always important for, for custom mesh. And let's see. It looks good. I'm just going to drop this on top of the box to have a make it locate in a same place. I'm going to shift click the box and make that the anchor link. I want to enable animesh on it and then it drops. Bring it up. And then I can just click my box to start animating it. And there we go. We have a shark. All done.